2.3 that is beginning of is the Gondwana. And from Pandil onwards, which is Pangea. So you can see the general setup of these places. We can show it in the details. Now, in 1800 million years, India formed part of supercontinent called Colombia. People also call it Luna. But it is done on the basis of paleomimetic remnants. And so, the sense that all the information is not properly available, it's available in parts. There are different reconstructions. You can see two of them here. And uh, this was 1860 million years. And then around 1000 million years ago, the Columbia fragmented and the place reassembled to form Rodina, Rodina supercontinent. It lasted around 750 million years, fragmented into the form Rodina supercontinent. Uh, uh, Bhargav sir, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Can you just uh, keep your uh, computer near yourself? There is some sound disturbance, sir. Can you move more towards her? Maybe yes. I don't know if I put it on full screen, it just disappears. Let me see once again. Is it okay now? Can you see the pattern? Yeah, this is okay now, sir. This is okay now. But uh, it's disturbing my how, how to... No, it's okay, sir. It's okay. Fine. No, I want to remove yours. Your screen is coming here, which I don't want because it obstructs my, I don't know how. Can I put on this share so can I can go? No. So, sir, okay, sir. Yeah, now you can start, sir. right up Okay. Uh, sir, I'm, I'm, okay, sir, everything is okay now. Okay. So it was thousand million years ago that the Columbia fragmented and the plate reassembled. You can see this is how it was. India was somewhere northwest of East Antarctica. Australia was somewhere here. And this was a time when we were in the lesser Himalaya. It doesn't concern the Tithian part. Now, so this was the time at 300 million years, as I said. This was the time, a rift, as a Permian time, for this Gondwana time, and around. Something is wrong, you know. Hey, if I just... Hey, isko sir, side me click kar dijiye, kahin pe bhi ye thik ho jayega. Bas aise click kar dijiye, sir, yahin pe bas ho jayega, thik. Bas okay. Oh, so I'm, I'm not getting what I want. So you see, this is how the rifting begins. And in this rift that was around 750 million years or 600 and odd years, the sediments which are deposited are known as the Tithian sediments. The Tithian sedimentary sequences are preserved south of the Indus Vita zone and north of the main central thrust for the higher Himalayan crystallines, these sediments, particularly the pre-300 million years, are also described as very sequence. Because in the real sense, the Gondwana or 
the Titian sediments or the Titian Sea, they say it begins from Permian onwards. So these successions are preserved in various inclinoria, and people often call it basin. You know, basin means it's isolated, but they were all connected because we see the same type of lithostatic FE, which we start from Srinagar, with some changes right up to Bhutan, and most of it has gone to the Tibetan part, north of Arunachal has gone to the Tibetan part. So the central area from west to east, first of all, we have Srinagar or Kashmir, and then south of it is the Chamba Bhadarwa or Kandi. Then this species, Janskar, is continuous. And then Bambana, Garwal, and Humayu, that is Kali, Kalapani, Nepal. And Nepal, we have two isolated West Nepal, and then East Nepal, Kathmandu. And finally, in Sikkim, we have very little of it, and Bhutan. And finally, the Arunachal part. So the Portions which I have shown light, light, light blue color is the Eocambrian part of the Paleoz uh, to early Paleozoic of the Titian part. And what we see dark blue with the bricks is the younger sequence of the Titian sequence. Now the deposition is started with, as I said, a bit of a rifting. And, uh, it was around 540 million years Cambrian with a shale. Because the basin shallowed around 540 million years with shale, silt stone. It continued till 495. And initially, we get what you see on the magnetite tooth, you see. Today. The rifting gave magnetite to in the north, and we have Singhi volcanics in Bhutan and Kyola trap in Salt Range. This is how the basin began, and then the deposition was mostly of the plastics, and it's only towards the end you have the stomatolytic yellow stone deposited in Spiti and a very thick sequence in Zanskar. And the Cambrian sediments are present in all the areas. Though so in Nepal, probably much of it has been eaten up by the granites. The most complete and the best study sequence is exposed in this Piti Zanskar, which is taken as a standard section to reconstruct the geological history of the Titian Basin. And at 542, that was the almost the pre-Cambrian Cambrian boundary. There was a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere. And that led to explosion of life. A variety of life appeared, notably trilobites. Traces of its locomotion are preserved. And mm. trilobites are supposed to be ancestor of the present-day cockroach. And we have Shalifano, crenoids, echinoids, they all appear, and the sedimentation lasted till 495 areas. And these are the type of fossils which you get in the Cambrian. You can see echinoids, sea lilies, some primitive brachiopods, small shalifana, and uh, some trilobites <coughs> we have already seen. See, the Cambrian basin was obliterated. There was an orogeny, we call it Kuryak orogeny, which was not as big as a Himalayan orogeny, but it was a very important orogeny which is felt all over the Himalaya. Right from Kashmir to Bhutan, we have seen that uh, there was a mountain building activity, and which, because just as the Himalaya has risen, the Cambrian sediments are also sharply elevated, and from there, the very turbulent streams started flowing, and they brought very coarser material, pebbles, cobbles, etc., 
which form a, a conglomerate, which is a, and this erosion lasted almost for about 8 million years. And after the area was penny plain, it was transgression of sea, or you can call it the sea return around 477 million years. And the sedimentation at that time was each over the folded Cambrian sediments marking an angular conformity. That is important to say that there was a mountain, not only mountain building activity, but folding and also thrusting during the late Cambrian and early Ordovician. And you can see angular conformity. You can see the one on the left is angular conformity, which you see. I can pick it pointer here, then it will be much easier for you. Anyway, so this one well, you can see angular conformity in the left side in the upper spitty valley, and what you see in the pit valley. And after the conglomerate, the arenites were deposited. The importance of these arenites you see here, or we can repeat it later, later also, that the topography is parallel to the fold. That means not, the folds are very young, not much erosion has taken place. So this is what we call first order topography. And these are all red quartzite indicating bomb possibly an arid climate. So some geologists consider it as a fluvial sed sediments, but normally in fluvial sediments, you get mud, shales, etc. These are fairly well sorted sandstone and sorting on, takes place only along the beach. So are we consider it as a very shallow marine sequence only along the beach. And around 553, the sea level rose because it was from shallower to the deeper part it comes. And then the animals were corals with algae, genoids, fish also appeared, and brachiopod populated the sea. Now we, we have not been able to find the fish so far in this pity, but other fossils are well known. This is left side you see a paleopagocytis colony, this Munchak Valley spitty, and this is how it looks, the prefal part looks in hand specimen, what you see on the right side. In this you have stomatoporoid, corals, crinoids, chain corals, and uh, brachiopods. This is why what we normally call that uh, Reef is a metropolitan for the animals. All kinds of animals live. They are builders, they are dwellers, and they are also scavengers. Some build, others live, for example, in the shallower part, protected part, the triazoa will grow. And where in, uh, within the coral, some algae will grow. So algae uses the carbon dioxide, manufactures oxygen, and oxygen is used by coral. So it's a sort of symbiotic relationship between these. And after that, there was another sedimentology break or secession in the sedimentation. The sea withdrew. With the result, we have a 20 million years break here. That uh, upper middle part of middle to upper Silurian is absent here. And uh, the sea return, the deposition commenced with the well-sorted sandstone muth in a beach or barrier island environment. And you can see the sharp contact between the Takche formation and the muth, which denotes disconformity. The difference between disconformity and what we normally say in unconformity is that unconformity means 
angular discordance, that means there was a folding. But in this, you don't see any disconformity. That was means there was no folding. The sea withdrew. There was some erosion, and it came back. And uh, the sedimentation commenced in a very shallow basin, almost beach to island. And this is the one where we get giant trackways of the giant scorpion. And that is a fossil which has been found only at three places, Spiti, Antarctica, and Australia. And that represents early Devonian. Now, this is a marker bed which you can see from Kashmir to Kalapani. John Kalapani is absent because Nepal onwards it was the deeper part. And when you come to Bhutan, it's a the sea did not come there. With the result in Bhutan, we don't see the equivalent of moot. And you can see white out, out from which you see from the distance is the moot quartzite or moot sandstone, which is a marker bed. And by this, you can always know that the Paleozoic bear ends and begins. And this is what I was telling the arthropods and giant. Scorpion traces, Diplodicnus, Piformis, Palmicium, Antarcticum, Palmicium, Antarcticum is the technical name for the giant scorpion. And uh, they are the forms which are found in the top fossil assemblies of early Devonian Antarctica in Australia. Now, this is what I have been telling you with Asia and others also that this rare giant. Scorpion fossils, which you can see the photograph and sketch also, has been totally destroyed by the road building in Spiti Valley. It's such a rare thing which you see it in three places in the world. One was India, and it's no more available. It's been just bulldozed by the commercial feet of Now, when the slight deepening with the deepening what happens that most of the plastic part is in the deltoid part and the sea is free from detritus and then the sedimentation of carbonate begins but it's a very gradual it's, it's, it fluctuates between stable uh, deeper shallow deeper shallow alternation and uh, Finally, the mood passes into this is the first step bend of the carbonate is taken to mark the building of Lipak. And in the lower part of Lipak, we have the middle Devonian monotons. So the rock, which is mood immediately below Lipak, is assigned a middle Devonian age. And you can see in this how the Quartzite limestone alternate. This and the sedimentation comprises shale, sandstone, carbonate, and they continued up to 346 million years. And within that, there are many several hard grounds. Hard ground is the one when there is a deepening of the basin, with the result, low sedimentation takes place, and the chemical action starts taking place. And uh, there could be a lot of organic activity, and that marks a what you call a high strand mark, and which is useful for the basin. It is not you can't use it for internal inter intercontinental variation, but within the basin is a very important event. What we call flooding surfaces. This is uh, because hard ground are very important. So these are the people who had come from, they are from Germany, from New Zealand and all. They came all the way to see hard, hard grounds in the Lipka formation in the city. And when you do go to the uppermost part of the Lipka formation, it was due to desiccation of sea in an arid climate and almost the shallower part of the basin, enormous thickness of gypsum was deposited. 
gypsum is workable, but it's not economic because it lies in a very remote area. So the, unless we have some cheaper logistics, it can't be worked because it becomes uneconomic otherwise. Then after this desiccation, the sea was again heaps rise in the sea level and occasional beach to it at tighter conditions were restored. And uh, it was around 346 million years. The deposition was of gray black shale, shale and whitish sandstone. And it continued till 323 million years. It was a shallow near coastal basin. And because it was a shallow coastal basin, see, uh, part which was near the coast in the shallower part was raised up. So once it was raised up, there was no deposition of the uh, co formation of Canistella shale in Kashmir, like that. And uh, so those parts remain positive. And these are the fossils which you get there. Now, in Basin part of Pogue, as I said, was a shallow basin. We get some plant fossils. You can see the central part of the top portion is plant fossils. So the plants which were growing near the coastline, they were they drifted into the sea because people think that because it's a plant fossil, the sediments are fresh water. But it is associated with the marine fossils, so other interpretation is that the plants drifted during the low tide, they were sucked into the marine basin and formed part of the marine sea. Now, this was the time when the Gondwana glaciation began. Now, Gondwana glaciation, when you have that is the freezing part much of the water freezes with the result, the sea level rises, goes down. When the sea level goes down, obviously many rocks are exposed to weathering. What was in the shallower part of the sea is exposed. And they form the provenance for the deeper part of the basin. And uh, normally the conglomerate which we get in the Spiti or even in Kashmir are not two glacial beds. Probably the glaciers, the real glaciation portion was the peninsular part. And by the time glaciers reached this part, they were melt, they melted. And the, that melted part was brought through by fluvial or streams to that other part. And you see what you see the important ridges these hill slopes are the conglomerates. And uh, so these were got transported by the streams originating from the melting of the glaciers. And, they are, and it continued up to 298 to 300 million years. And uh, there's a controversy whether at that time India was part of Gondwana or had already been part of Pangaea. This is still not solved. This is how the conglomerate looks. And at that time, by the time you finish it, the, all the continents have reassembled in the supercontinent of Pangaea. And where all the continents huddled together to form it. Uh, at that time. Now you have seen that Rodina at that time. India was somewhere to the northwest, and uh, Antarctica was further up. Now the entire thing has changed. You have Africa, and then on this south eastern side of Africa, you have India, Antarctica, and Australia. Now this was the scenario before India started drifting towards present position. Now this fossil and rock evidence were utilized to 
reconstruct the paleogeography of this period. And this is how the Pangea has been reconstructed fossil evidence and paleomagnetic. Now, about 298 million years, the sea covered many positive areas. The Kachan formation comprising sandstone, because when the sea glaciers melted, the sea rose, level rose, and the sea level rose, it was not very high level, the basin was too shallow, and then in the shallower part, the Kachan formation was deposited. So this marks the conformity or disconformity Kachang over the older formations. In some places it is over the Muth, some places it is over the Dipak. And uh, this is how the sedimentation continues up to 290 million years. And that was the time when the sea was very shallow and rough. The shed Y was that is Uridesma, which you see here. They say it was found only in the depth of about a meter, slightly more than a meter. And that's why in such a high energy sea, the shells were very thick. That is how nature responds to the change climate and the environment, because the thin shells would be destroyed in a rough sea. So the shells at that time, whether it was Uridesma or Deltopactin, they were all very thick shells. And these fossils are found in Australia, indicating the proximity within data. And the sedimentation was disrupted because that's what we call the Kornona rifting. The Kornona rifting went to place. There was volcanicity in Kashmir and Zanskar. In city, we don't see much of it except in uh, Chandra Valley. But what we see here are very thick sills. And when the rifting takes place, you see that when you have a mountain building that is subtraction, the sea recedes. But when there is a rifting, the sea spreads. So with this rifting, there was another transgression of sea, and that was the one in the which was a deeper sea which under anoxic conditions between 259.1 to 254 million years. Fossils of deeper water animals proliferated along with the ammonoids, and the sedimentation terminated in its pity with a break of 3 million years. But the sedimentation commenced at 250. I'm talking of its pity only because here there is a break between Permian and the Triassic. But in Kashmir, there is a continuous succession from Permian to Triassic. But in its city as well as in its Kashmir, there is a sudden change in the fauna. What you see, the Permian elements, they disappear, and the Triassic element appear. And uh, you see this black shell you see is the Bungri, and over that white one you see is the Triassic sequence. And this section we have sampled and is no more visible because the PWD people have constructed a wall here. And this was a section which we have made famous internationally. And as we said, that when there was a deepening of the sea, shallower part, the sea spread over to the shallower part also. So, what was forming coastal areas of uh, the whole? Chamba, etc. They were flooded, and the, the sedimentation commenced with the upper Permian, that is from the Cyclonobus Old Hamni, and it continues later. So this is the other one, which was in 298 to 201 million years. The sediment has the Cambrian metastatic. This is very important. I hope uh, almost everyone knows that at 250 million years, the entire world witnessed a most pronounced extinction event 
the 90 to 95 percent of marine life and 70 percent of terrestrial life vanished. One view is the volcanicity in Siberia and China raised the carbon dioxide level, which led to increase in the temperature about by five degrees. The raised temperature affected the ocean's temperature, which melted the frozen methane reservoir, expelling enough methane to further raise the atmosphere temperature. Another hypothesis suggests that hydrogen sulfide as the ocean bottoms it emanated and which accumulated in an oxic zone and finally rose in the atmosphere, destroyed the ozone zone in the upper atmosphere and permitted ultraviolet radiation leading to mass mortality. And the latest view which people say is there was a large bolide impact that led to extensive forest fires and mass which forest fire mass that atmosphere and within a period of 10,000 years, there was a rapid increase in temperature leading to mass extinction. See, we are much closer to the truth in Cretaceous, but here the opinions differ. This is how we have sampled, you can see, we have drilled. You can see it is almost continuous drilling which we have done one centimeter scale to find how the fauna has changed and what is the break. So between the upper Permian and the Triassic, that is peak in formation, there is a ferruginous layer which earlier people had missed it. And when we went there sometimes, it was in 1982, we found that there is a very marked break and which is present throughout the species. And uh, the ferruginous layer at Akatu. Now, unfortunately, again, as I said, the first three or four locality can't be seen anymore because they have constructed a pond. Now, Kungri black shale represents is a, is a about 250 million years age ago. And four million years of years are absent along this contact. It varies from three to four million years. So absence means we, are, we really do not know where the sedimentation ended. No, because the sedimentation ends, then there is erosion. Some places the erosion may be more, other places the erosion may be less. Where the erosion is less, the break may be about 200 to 300 million years. Where the erosion has gone much more, then you say the break is four million years, but the main thing is that there was a return, it was at 251 million years. And this is how the sedimentation of the, the Paleozoic started. In the Cambrian, you know, it was mainly from very shallow part, it's subtidal. Low energy intertidal, and after that, when you have a break, the conglomerate begins at the from the beach, and then the slight deepening, the, the conglomerate give yield place the sandstone, and then another deepening when you have the coral reef or polar algal reefs, and then was a break as we said. After the break, the sea returned on the beach. That was the booth. And then you have a deepening after that. And further shallowing, which leads to the gypsum, and it keeps on shallowing till you get into conglomerate. And then the trunk, the volcanic city. And after the volcanic city, you have the KHM or sandstone, another break, and then the sedimentation is at the mid shelf. And that is toxic, and that is very important because. It could be a source for oil. Only thing is that we have to find the, the maturity. And the uh, unfortunate part is that perhaps it has been heated too much, so you may not get oil, but it is good enough for shale gas. So it was a degassing of the carbon dioxide, because we said 
because of the, the break was because of the major volcanic city in Siberia and China. So it gives rise to a lot of oxygen, so carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide becomes source for times 24 position. Degassing of carbon dioxide with some lime, it forms the limestone. And deposition of limestone. The sedimentation initially, very small part, was in a very shallow very basin. But there was rapid deepening. And rapid deepening is attributed to drifting in the Western Alps especially in the French Alps. There was a deepening with the result. It was lifting with the result. There was a shadowing in the But the climate was still warm. And the time became better. And that was a very global climate change. The wetting part, we call it, it is, give it a name, event, which was, which is known right from Alps Oman. That was the time when it becomes a wet, and because in the wet climate you have a lot of erosion. It is all the material is carried because wet, a lot of rivers and material going into the sea. So the carbonate sedimentation ends and the silly sea plastic they are deposited. That is, if you remember the lithostratigraphy of Vietnam. Uh, then you will remember the Autoceras, Officeras, Nicoceras, Ravenstromia, like that. And what we have called it, Nikin, Kaga, Chumyu, and then the plastics. So that was the beginning of the So that was the climate. And then the sandstone were deposited. And uh, wet conditions were short lived. The basin was shallow. Conditions short lived. Shallow basin because the, some what you call pluvial climate ended, the erosion ended, and the basin was clear with the result that deposition of limestone or yellow stone consumed. Resumed and then that was a period of rebuilding mainly by corals. And that rebuilding is also known right from us is to Oman. And uh, it was, we discovered it sometimes, I think it was in 1982 that I wrote a reef. Our reef is a slightly different uh, from the house. Our reefs are very high energy reefs. And in high energy, they are the real reef, as they call it, and huge thickness. But ours is slightly subtidal, it's slightly shallower. So this is what we call null reefs. And uh, this in was large clam shells also built to small reefs in the late Triassic time and carbonate rocks. Now, topographically, we, we were able to map everywhere. You know, it's pretty tough, such a tough area. We can't go everywhere, but luckily, when we classified the rocks, we classified it on the basis of, you see, dark shale is Gumri. That is Permian. Then you see a escarpment sort of thing that is Meakin, Lower Triassic, and southern slope that is Kaga, and steep that is Chumyu, Rama. Rama represents the wet climate, and then again a limestone. So these we could, where we was possible, we went and mapped other places. We used the aerial photos to map it. This is a view of Pura Reef. Can see how they are the robust corals, Chico Ismenia. And this is how the sedimentation begins in the Triassic, very shallow part. Then it, it is, uh, but it, by the time you come to the Carnian, which is close to the open seashells, 
that is the only time when the open sea shell was available. This is because we, in this part, we start getting radio that happened. And then the shallows, this is the typical dynamic sedimentology. Shallows, and then you have the, what you should remember, the quartzite, what they used to call quartzite cities, that it goes to the beach, and then there was another deepening with the result you have the Kyoto carbonates. And Kyoto carbonate, you also get a small trees there. Now, the Kyoto carbonates are overlaid by the black spitty shells, which has a break of about 19 million years. And the sedimentation commences in an oxic marine basin. Again, you know, it could be the source of the hydrocarbon. You can see here, again, disconformity. There is, there is a break, but there is no angular disconformity. The carbonate is sharply overlain by the black shade. There is no alternation or gradation there. And this black shade represents 180 to 145 million years. The Dolo stone, the youngest age is 201. So there is a sedimentosic break or almost about 20 million years are missing from this contact, what we often call it upper calorian conformity. And these black shells are rich in ammonite fossils, what we often commonly call it saligram. And the worst part is that they are being sold to foreign tourists by the local people. But varying, depending upon the preservation, from 100 rupees to 500 rupees. And then you see the black shell of the spitty alternates with the sandstone. And uh, so there is no break from spitty to Guimel sandstone of Cretaceous. It's continuous one. And uh, spitty shell is deeper in the basal part the shallows towards the upper part, and then by the time you come, the basal part of Guimel sandstone is oolitic. And when you go up, it becomes slightly deeper, and some people call it flesh. And you can see now on the right side, you can see the alternation more clearly. This is a view that you see. Chikkim limestone. And then on the right side, you see how Chikkim limestone gradually changes into sh Chikkim shale. Limestone shale, limestone shale. This is what we call a traditional contact. And this is a deeper water because we get planktonic polymerica, like lower truncana, lower rotates. Uh, this is the time when we say that the Basin margin had become active. That means it had started traveling north and tilted towards the beginning of the towards the subduction part. This is how it becomes that you have a switch over the Cretaceous sequence. Ophiolite was then placed as affected masses because over the Cretaceous you said, which is Sedimentary rock, you have the ophiolite moss, and ophiolite is the oceanic crust. So when it comes over, that is what we call it obduction. When subduction takes place, much of the oceanic material is transported tectonically and comes to rest over the sediments. And you find it in Zanskar, you find it in Malla Johar, and uh, that was the time. 54 million years that the collision had commenced and the Poland Basin had taken a shape. The Poland Basin is because the Indian sheet bends and the sag is formed. You can see in this photograph. And uh, in Chikkim, in the Sanskar, the Kelcha formation and the Gumba 
Caducine, Miocene are depositing. So some people regard it as an extension of the tissues because of, over the Cretaceous it was deposited. Other consider it as a transgressive related to foreland basin because they said Titian, according to them, the Titian sedimentation ends at the end of Cretaceous. And then there was another transgression because of the formation of is something not related to sedimentation, but you see, you, you have heard of anticlinal valley and synclinal hills. But here you see anticlinal hill. That is the first order of topography showing that this, this phase of folding is very recent. It's not very old. With the result, the anticlinal hills have remained anticlinal. And then you see synclines have remained valley. And similarly, a dome, anticlinal spur has remained as a dome. And come back to the first slide which I have showed you. You see these, you can see the, how the folds are parallel to, topography is parallel to the folds. No erosion has taken place. That means the younger phase is the first order of topography. And on the contrary, you see chicken syncline is a synclinal hill. So this fold, that is a first generation fold, was older, where you could see, and the second, last generation folds, F3 as you call it, were the younger, with the result, they preserved the first order topography. And this is how the entire thing has uh, changed. And it should start with the lithospheric activator drifting initially with the basic volcanic along the near below the pre cambrian cambrian boundary. And then you see this is the sea level curve, how the sea level curve goes. And what you see, the black one is the global sea level drawn by Bilal Haq and others. And red one is the one what we see, we are able to find in his pity. There is a parallelism that shows that any event, wherever it takes place, whether global, in America, Australia, it has repercussions all over. And that's why when we say that sequence stratigraphy is used for global correlation, sequence and event stratigraphy are very important, which have been almost ignored in our country so far. Only very gradually we are starting, but we are too late. So first is tries extensive regression and the commencement of uh, the Turkey Purogeny, the sharp rise of the prominence, formation of some marine highs, and then the stabilization. Stabilization we have coral stomatochoroid bras or algal reach, etc. Then after that there's a break and then we have Transgression of beach, which shelf and kinetic activity associated with it. And then we have slight deepening and series of progressing cycles of the Lipak finally getting into the arid and desiccation of the basin. And then alternation between shallow and deep, you have this uh, co formation. And then the transgression, and on that transgression also there is a small conglomerate, but that conglomerate is different from the conglomerate, which is different type, that is a black conglomerate. And then we have extensive transgression because the Gondwan are rifting. And then rapid deepening, and you have the Pacific of Middle Orient Age, gradual shadowing, transgression, and Jurassic uh, deepening of the basin in the late Cretaceous time, and then we will see next chapter on this floor. Hello.
हेलो बोलो हाँ सर नमस्कार थैंक यू सर थैंक यू फॉर योर एक्सिलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन एंड टेकिंग अस टू द एंटायर जर्नी ऑफ एवोल्यूशन राइट फ्रॉम स्टोमेटोलाइट्स टू ट्राइलोवाइट्स टू कोरल्स टू फिशेस एंड इट वाज अ जर्नी आई थिंक विच एनीवन हु हैज विजिटेड Himalayas can really enjoy, and the evolutionary process which we have shown, not only of the Himalayas but also of the life forms from where we can actually uh, see how the evolution of life actually took place. So uh, there may be very uh, interesting findings, but I, what I would like to ask you is uh, when. all this spiti formation or what you talked about so entire deposition of this spiti which we are seeing presently in the himalayas was it taking place uh, uh, do you have any idea at what altitudes and at what latitudes were these taking place is in the uh, geological times oh, altitude uh, has altitude has to be zero because there was sea Altitudes have to be zero, almost, or maybe below the sea level, no, and the latitudes. Uh, so it was sea, and then uh, you see that uh, most of the sedimentation was in subtidal, so that was not very deep. Only in, when you come to the tri lower part of Triassic, that is uh, up to Carnian, that was deeper part, and the depth will be easily around fifty two hundred meters. Fifty two hundred meters. Uh, yes, hundred meters depth. Hundred meters, okay, hundred meters. Hmm. And sir, what could be the latitude of the of the spiti at that time? That you have to see. That uh, <laughs> we can go back to this. Uh, we have the reconstruction. Uh huh. So it was near Africa at that time. Near Africa. Okay, very good. <laughs> so Nigel Hughes and your your almost. Uh, uh, We are arriving on the same time at this time when entire life, which we are seeing, which you have shown us today in Precambrian, Cambrian, and to Cretaceous and Paleocene, uh, Eocene times, they were all almost like near to the equator at that time. You mean to say, yeah, hey, uh, not uh, near to the equator, but near to uh, <clears throat> no, some Africa, example, maybe some, some Rodina and you know, all Rodina. Ah. Well, and and the tri and the trilobites, uh, trilobites which we are seeing, and uh, and other 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 fossils, uh, can we correlate them with the uh, African and the Australian and uh, Antarctic fossils which you are finding in the yes. Time? Trilobite is another fossil which which have very this who largely travel very fast, so mm -hmm. we can correlate. That is very useful. We can, but we have found. Maximum correlation of our trilobites with China, mm -hmm. and uh, we have some element in Australia also. This is a is a global correlation required. Mm -hmm. Now, see the most important part of trilobite is that the evolution in trilobite has been very fast. Mm -hmm. With the result, we are able to make a small zonation within the trilobite, mm -hmm. and now. They are because of the radiometric dating. We almost know what level it proliferated all over the world. Mm -hmm. And based on trilobite, and is uh, you can also find small breaks. Mm -hmm. One horizon is missing. That means you know it's a break. And that's what we are now trying to do in the Spiti and Zaska, which is which is it's a very tedious job, which. Uh, My younger colleague, Niti Singh, is doing it, mm -hmm. and uh, well, we, we are about to revise the trilobite biostratigraphy, and it mm -hmm. is so useful that uh, now take for example, uh, I take you back to the Lesser Himalaya. 
In Dasar Himalaya, we have many troll, phosphate bearing tar, mm -hmm. and some uh, in upper part we have tar trigobite. Mm -hmm. Now, this sequence is exactly akin to what we see in South China. Oh, really? Uh -huh. yeah. Now you see, it's, it was normally if you see the present setup, you should say that one, the Tithian part was nearer to China, so it should also resemble China, but it doesn't represent. China. So what we are trying to propound, and it has also been corroborated by one uh, geologist or global geologist. D sellers in the Arizona University that at that time Nasser Himalaya was closer to China and Tithian block was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's only by late part of uh, late, later part of lower Cambrian or middle Cambrian the Tithian part came and joined the Indian plate. Mm -hmm. And that joining is probably the MCT. The joining is the MCT, you mean to say, main yeah, central thrust. Yeah, I mean, this is, we have propounded it, and uh, more or less similar view has been expressed by T sellers, but not many agree. But my <coughs> my fact is this that Nasa Himalaya has a sequence which is akin to what we see in South China, but in the Tithian Himalaya is different. But when you come to the Tithian Himalaya, the middle Cambrian part, then it is same as China. So this part came somewhere middle Cambrian time with the result. Then it formed a continuity from this uh, lesser Himalaya to the China's part. We have similar trilobite form. Uh, you mean to say that? So, so what I interpret, what I uh, what I interpret from your uh, code is like uh, the South China. The latitudinal position at that time may be near the equator. Uh, yeah. so much, so much. Uh, somewhere, but, uh, yeah, maybe near. Uh, uh, what we are talking about uh, South oh. China is like. Uh, yes, because South China it, Sea, basically South China Sea, yes. and maybe Indonesia and uh, all are, this. There are lot of there are lot of reconstructions available, uh -huh. and. Uh -huh. uh, we have not done any work on that paleometric part, so I won't be able to position to comment. But all I can say is the geological setup suggests that up to the Mishukian part, that is the earliest Cambrian, Nasser Himalaya and China were closer. And after that, Nasser Himalaya, Tithian Himalaya and China were all together, forming maybe slightly with some Various in between, but they were very close by. Okay. So, uh, so it's just very interesting and very intriguing uh, uh, findings now, and maybe uh, I think, but it is more also uh, like uh, conflicting because when we are talking about the collusion and the timing, and if uh, and the timings, uh, because uh, if below that we have this uh, again the. Eocene, Miocene sequence, and the mm -hmm. Shivalix. Yes. So, how do you how do you think that? Uh, and then the, this side also, and uh, if you go beyond uh, Spiti and into Ladakh and along the in the Sucha zone, again these uh, these uh, Himalayan sequence, the Central Himalayan sequence, the Tethian Himalayan sequence, the sandwich between this uh, uh, mm -hmm. Sabatu, Eocene, Sabatu, Dakshai, and or maybe you can say Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene sequence, and uh, here. The, along the suture zone and also along the main frontal fault also we get the same sequence like um, the Shivalix and uh, then the, we have the Swatus and the Chai and the, and, and mm. the Soli formation representing Eocene, my, Oligocene, Miocene age. So, so this, uh, the entire sequence which you have talked about is just sandwiched between, between uh, if we say the entire sequence between the Indus Sanko suture zones and uh, the main frontal fault this sequence is uh, what you have talked about is sandwiched between the uh, between the uh, Eocene 
oligocene myosin sequence and here and but in in the in uh, in morni hills near near uh, chandigarh now it's like shivalix and almost you get the stromatolite sequence also almost in the same uh, uh, levels you know uh, so so what do you say about that you see see there's a there's a very detailed elaboration requires but uh, um, that i'll do later but simple thing is you take for example uh, sobatu is deposited over the tal over shell limestone of cretaceous age the masuri area or karwal lands down area it is over the tal in masuri and karwal area it is over the prol in himachal pradesh it is over the blenny in hanog area it is over all the three formations of the simla group pasanpur chaosha sanjoli and it is over the shali and it is over the infra shali that is mandi darla volcanics at darla now you see this entire column is around at least 10 km thick and now you find that blenny is or this uh, sobatu is deposited in all these formations and their every formation the little species and biofaces are same that means all these formations were exposed at the same altitude to provide a uniform depth for the sobatu basin now this it will be the same altitude will be provided only when these sequences are folded and eroded penny plate so then once it is eroded at many places sobatu will be rest over the darla over the shali over at the I mean tal or cretaceous or bigini whatever so what you see at darla oh, sorry shirla balla or tamsar in near saton is the basement of shali basement which is exposed in this part and uh, is a it is it is all because of the kurtya orogeny i have a paper you read that paper in the journal of south asian so this this has been translated from distant area before the deposition of sobatu and then the sobatu has been deposited So uh, again, uh, okay, you can you 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 get all these things right. But uh, again, were they all autochthonous or were they all uh, allochthonous units at the time of deposition and then the folding started? Such so maybe no, they are not on the right. They are not uh, uh, just like so. Like uh, in in this section which you have talked is right. But uh, when you talk about the intersanko suture zone again, we have the sabatu sequence there also with all these. Uh, That is, Oysters, see, have... that is name. If you are talking about in this part, you you have that paper by I B Singh. Uh, I think you are also an author of it. Uh huh. So there were two arms, which are on, on either side of the trench, the central trench lines, and somewhere they merged, and then just just as you have the uh, Arabian Sea going round to the Bay of Bengal. Mm -hmm. That's it. Same sedimentation of the same age rocks on either side, but so the contemporaneous. So, so, so uh, if if we if we if we consider what you are saying of the same arcs, then probably the collision has not happened at that time, you know. So, no, so the important so, important no, thing no. is like uh, in your presentation also you showed that uh, the, when the India was moving, you know. Uh, you showed some diagrams in the in the other side. You showed some explanation. There were no. there was some mismatch see, between the timings. You know, no, if you see, can just show are, the slides and all. There are two two different things. Mm. See, when you talk of the Paleocene, Eocene, Paleogene, it is a foreland basin. Foreland basin developed only after collision. So Poland basin. Okay, uh, then uh, I have my own concerns because I have been working in Kasoli, and we get all the flora and flora. What we are getting in flora from Kasoli are all 
not related anywhere to Himalayan regions, what we have plant fossils which we are finding, but they are all confined to the Indomalayan region. We, we get all the fossils which we are finding in Kasali. The plant fossils, they resemble Andaman Nicobar Island, they resemble... Oh. Uh, so my concern is, my concern is the paleo latitudinal position and the papers which are coming from MIT University, they say that uh, the, the Khadum volcanics, they are also like near the equator, 11 degrees north of it, and uh, they have been transported, the entire mass has been transported. And then when you say that, um, so somewhere uh, we have to keep what you say is like, Spiti has to be south of equator when everything was being deposited and Zazkar maybe right and then things moved around and uh, yes, uh, what you say, but the collision timing again cannot be, uh, uh, because then if we are, if we are, if Sabathu and Dakshai and Kasali are very near to the equator and then it takes a lot of millions of years to them for them to transport to the present positions, you know, we are talking about uh, if, if Khardum volcanics due to paleomagnetic dating, what they have done is now 11 degrees north of uh, equator and then uh, the solely we are talking about is four degrees north of equator, and then the entire sediments are being taken out. So I think it was very, it takes a lot of journey, but again, timings, uh, can you give some concrete evidences on what basis you say that the timings are around 47, 57 million years, what you said in yep. your presentation? In Sobatu, in Sobatu, you have ophiline detritus. Mm -hmm. Size fossils, you leave as size fossils give you the age. And now the fossils have been dated, absolute age is available. So forget mm. about that aspect, that is certain. Now, why we say that the collision had begun? Because you have in Sumatu ophiolytic detritus. Not only in Sumatu, even in Nepal, what is called has formation and all that. That means the oceanic crust had been exposed. And only then you will have ophiolytic. And then there are certain garnets which are found only in the oceanic crust. The detritus are found. So that is the main reason. And now coming to the paleometric is, for example, once Najman has said that the Subatu to Daksha is continuous paleomagnetic. But when they come to the detrital ages, they say it's a 10 million year break. Now, mm -hmm. paleomagnetic can mislead you. If the rocks have been heated, because once it is heated, the paleomagnetic is lost or re reset. So, uh, certainly so, can't. But, but uh, even if you get uh, some ophiolytic uh, detritus in uh, Subatu, doesn't mean that uh, the collision had started. That can be an early collision uh, when it was uh, uh, a basin, other basin, and then things moved. You know, See, they, equator, no. equator, the sedimentation are takes place, and then they, they have dated. It is all dated now. No, I agree. Dating can be done, and dating is okay, accurate. But uh, how do you say that at that point of time the collision took place? You know, maybe subduction is taking place near the equator. Also, there could be some fair, activity, the fair, Indonesian fair, activity. Fair, fair. But because, sir, please, sir. Fair. Uh, but fair. So you must see somewhere. You just can't say it has had somewhere where it has happened. No, ophiolite, sir, ophiolite ka job aap kya rahe hai, aur jo ek aam uzar bhi hai, apni sarvatru ki ladakh mein bhi hai, humara concern sirf yehi hai ki jo hum uzar ki evidences dekhte hai, jo bilkul palm leaves humara ko ladakh mein bhi milte hai, aur yaan pe bhi humara ko milte hai, the flora and the fauna doesn't speak about any collision at that time. So, it is just... Flora can't say... Flora will not talk about collision. Haan, wohi toh mein bol raho, nahi possible hai na, sir. Flora ji... So, at that time, this entire sequence, what you are talking about is... So, according to you, just... I just want to summarize what you said was about from... From, say, about Rodiana times to Pengia times to Godwana times to whatever... So the paleo latitudinal position at that time was very near to the uh, present Gondwana land time, well, maybe uh, south of equator. Do you agree with <laughs> us, or, or you have some other other points on that? The Spiti, um, the Spiti and Zanskar basins were deposited south of equator at the time when they were deposited. Uh, so so it it solves a lot of problems. 
because we are seeing Malian part here, but at the time of the actual deposition, they were very near to the uh, south of equator, very near to the Gondwana land. No, because you see, it was a very big, Indian plate was much bigger. Much of it has been lost in subduction. Mm -hmm. So. No, no, I'm not. Yeah, I, I agree, sir. It has been so, lost. But so, so whatever evidences we are getting, whatever evidences we are getting in the form of flora and fauna from your records, can we say that uh, these sediments were deposited very near to the Gondwana tanks and then they were transported? Because we cannot find any evidence of uh, those fossils being present in the present day locality which we are seeing them in the Himalayas. Himalayas were not born at that time. So, because they are all they are all at sea level now. You all, you only said they are all sea level zero level or below hundred meters below sea level. So I am talking about the paleo latitudinal position. So Himalayas were not there, and then the paleo latitudinal positions I am talking about could be very near to the south of equator, and then uh, they moved. When the India plate moved, so they moved accordingly. And then we are seeing what Himalayas are today. So maybe, yes, it was very interesting. If you have some comments on that, we can say. And I'll request anybody wants to ask uh, um, any questions to Professor uh, Bhargav. Uh, I request any participants if they have any questions, they can ask Professor Bhargo. So I'll just go back to. I think, sir, uh, it has been very interesting talk. Kishan Khan, can you just summarize everything? Acha. You're trying to show something, sir? Of course, it has oh, been a okay. wonderful talk, Dr. Arya. And uh, I think that uh, Dr. Bhargava has cleared all the doubts we had in mind. And, uh, ah, sir, you are like, take minute, take minute. Just see this, sir. Take minute, take minute. This like, previous one, sir, previous one. Jo India ki movement aapne dikhai hai. Previous slide, sir. Previous. Previous slide, ki jiye, sir. Okay. Previous slide, ki jiye, sir. Next slide, Karnaoka. Next slide. 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 Next that is जो आप ये present boundary देख रहे हो जो that extended part था which has already docked इसको कहते हैं docking one is collision another is docking the, by 55 million years ago it has already docked the Peniel zone sir sir वो that is because we don't have much evidence for that we will not comment on that at that point but uh, but more or less uh, it was very interesting presentation and then the uh, timing of collision is still like uh, we need to find more evidences from Indian side and uh, more data no. needs to come. You should differentiate between docking and actual collision. Mm -hmm. Docking, subduction, collision. There are three stages. Right. I'll take you. Sir, now what is it that in the equator there is a whole plate where we have collided in India, so that was the Sabatu Basin which they are talking about near the equator and then first it was docking with the Sabatu Dakshai Basin here and then it moves again with that sequence. So this is uh, another theory which is coming up. In the equator there is a whole plate where we have collided in India, this collision was the first place here. This nee, basin collision. was extending right from Indonesia. Collision to... 
पोल्यूशन जब हुआ तो तो सचिवालय बनना शुरू हो गया दिस वाज द सबट्रैक्शन पार्ट व्हिच हैड टेकन प्लेस एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ सबट्रैक्शन टॉकिंग एंड सबट्रैक्शन फोल्ड एंड बेसिन वर टेप्ड अप हियर एंड दैट फोल्ड एंड बेसिन वाज द वन ऑन आइदर साइड जहां पर आपको ये कैलविडिन सेडिमेंट्स मिलते हैं I will come to ये जो ये जो पहले ये एक collision ये this is one uh, one collision model for the explaining the uh, uh, collision between India and China but the other yeah. other other model yeah. is we have this two the... two collisions theory and first collision happens very near to the equator and then the sequence moves further yeah. north yeah. and then the entire uh, these two the, sequence moves this is this is the most acceptable What is now? What you are saying that there the entire collision was not in one stage. Mm-hmm. Then the, the, the variation collided in the eastern part with the Nagaland, or in the western part, and then there is a anti-clock anti-clockwise movement that takes. So it the, the talking and the collision varied from place to place, but not much of difference. That is the going into the Minor aspect. So, yes, sir. Some yes, sir. Because uh, it has been very interesting, and your talk is almost like uh, very similar to the talk which we had by Professor Nigel Hughes, and he was also of the same opinion that the Zanskar and the the Spiti basins were deposited very near uh, south of equator, near to the Gondwana lands, and because Majority this of the is, this, is, this is the no the your equator will be somewhere passing through the heart of Africa. Yeah, India yeah. is just south of Africa. Just south of Africa. South of exactly, Africa. sir. So, यहाँ पे जो deposition हो रही है और वहाँ पे deposition हो रही है, it makes lot of sense, sir. But but it hey, has it has nothing to do with pollution. Hey, I think whatever your sequence, what you no, told us. यहाँ जो deposition हो रहा है, ये तो बिल्कुल Interestingly, he said that majority of his fossils, which they worked on, have similarity with Australian fossils and African fossils and Antarctic. Oh, um, it was a long, long back. You know, when they started talking about the Gondwana land, at that time only to see the reconstruction was done, and fossils were the main evidence to use. So it was so, done. So, now we, so, we are getting more and more evidences. That's all. Hmm. So this explains everything, you know. So we can have the Paleozoic sediments extending right from India to maybe this African north, and then moving to North American side, and then this Abs, Eurasia, and the China. So it explains that we can have the Paleozoic sequence all along this coast. Stromatolite, trilobites, all can move here, and can be similar. But 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 the entire thing is then explaining the movement and the tectonic that still I think uh, remains questions because then this story of uh, uh, collision is about uh, explaining how Vatu Dakshai uh, the solid sediments and from the uh, the other side in the Sutra side how the uh, in the Molays Kargil Molays and the Numa formation how they also having similar flora and fauna which we found in the Samatu sediments behave. so they can be two different environments but i think your presentation on uh, explaining the paleozoic uh, times and the life which was prevalent at that time was really fascinating sir we really appreciate your hard work which you have done in the past and i think this should be a lot of encouragement to the students young students who are pursuing their uh, career in understanding himalayas it's not about just uh, going there and uh, doing some work but it is the work done systematically by uh workers like you in the past who have brought this entire himalayas to life again and i think your work will be appreciated in times to come and with more and more oh, geologists no. who are uh, no, coming no work 
no work in especially in a science like geology can be find that no 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 i don't think sir i'm just saying they'll be appreciated because more and more geologists like dp singh and all and his colleagues and maybe other geologists who listen to this lecture in near future they'll be inspired by your hard work which you have done in these remote areas at that time because i can visualize because in 1990s when we went in 19 yeah, yeah in late 90s it was like a terrible task for us to reach there when i went for the first time to drilling rig with the drilling rig but uh, the time you have working were like uh, we cannot even imagine you know i think there were no roads no communication no lights and uh, oh, how I, you traveled at that time there were no yes. no roads well it was plus, like plus, a, we can't even imagine the imagine the times which you have worked and collected all this data at that time you know first my first visit to city was in 1962 mm-hmm. and the road was only up to koti koti onwards we used to track mm-hmm. so that any interesting incident you like to here and give any 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 advice to the young geologists who uh, plan to study the himalayas and uh, and carry out some research so some last words from your side and then we summarize the uh, today's uh, talk on earth day any what any I, any message which you want like to give uh, what, I, what i would say is repetition of what ganser said in punjab university in 1976 when he came to chandigarh and visited punjab university i won't name but some of the teachers asked him what should we do he said map map and map map <laughs> yes so mm. that is what is necessary unless you map field geology is very important mm. whether it is now the trend is to collect sample somewhere and then put it in the machine and get but unless you know the regional significance of that sample is of no use it's of no use very very rightly said sir very rightly said take for example in chor granite there are different type of granites so unless you have map you would not know which granite you are taking just exactly. calling it chor granite is this is it's of no use mm-hmm. and you see professor jain he is now working now he has found people were only saying lower paleozoic granite and all he has found that there are enough granites of 830 million years age yeah in ladakh also yeah. they have found uh, some dikes which are about 14 million years uh, so it's very important to first of all map and then know what are you dating yeah so whether it is sedimentology or that. and then unless you have map unless you have interpreted mineral modeling is no joke for mineral modeling you must have a very firm geological model mm-hmm. so kishan kant yes sir sir uh, can you just take over now of course uh, it has been an excellent discussion and uh, of course a very informative session that has been given by dr bhargwa and uh, it has of course gone beyond what we thought at the beginning and uh, i hope that just like always uh, we are thankful to dr bhargwa and all the other participants who remained intact during the whole discussion it has been uh, very enriching very informative and of course as you have said that for young enthusiasts who want to work in this field it will of course add to their kitty and in the future as well they can refer to the information which has been provided in today's uh, uh, program and uh, dr arya for providing this platform of course uh, it's of immense value for all of us and uh, it's a great initiative that has been taken by you and uh, definitely in the future as well you would be hosting many more programs of the same kind which would certainly be good for the geologist fraternity for the archaeological fraternity those people who are interested in such talks and uh, suddenly the numbers are going to grow just like today we had a good number of listeners and uh, i hope that in future we'll be having many more people will be coming to such programs and uh, subscribe to this uh, particular channel which is uh, 
being hosted by Tethys Fossil Museum. And uh, someone, of course, was asking, where is the exact location of the museum? It is in village Dangiari, as I have already said, uh, very near to Dharampur in Solan district in Himachal Pradesh, and not very far from Chandigarh. And uh, you are all, of course, uh, welcome. You may come to the place and uh, have a look at how the things are being placed, how the things are growing up there. Uh, thanks a lot once again, Dr. Bhargava, for Thank being you. there today for us. Thank and uh, we, we hope that in future as well, you will certainly come and deliver more talks as and when we need your help. Hmm? Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you. So thank you very much. And uh, it was wonderful to hear you on this Earth Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I thank all the participants also. And I think we end this session today. Thank you, uh, Professor Kishankant. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Very thank much. you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Good night.